good C get on that uh, on that curl or turn through there, Ruben. You're the, I think you probably have the best look at that play. Oh, 45 is the shooter. Let's make sure we watch Party Crashers on the rebound and don't let the reroute. Take a look at it. Be patient with that whistle uh, coming from the trail. Give your lead an opportunity to hit a whistle on that play. And, and uh, good give up. Everybody got it that time. <laughs> 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 I saw you. Everybody got it. <laughs> Way to go, man. <laughs> That's some good stuff. Man, have you had a whistle today? Have you taken a foul to the table yet? How many? Okay. Seen nothing. Sure.
So on Out of Bounds, raise your hand, color and direction in that sequence. Stop the clock, color, and then a directional point. Maybe we have a triple on that play. Take the opposite of the table. Center of the court, give you a signal. Uh, communicate with your partners who your shooters are and uh, uh, go on about your business. Post play, talk to him, Pete. That a boy, I love that. Count it. Count it. Pete, give him something to talk about. <laughs> well, he was on the wrong side of the court coming up uh, on a free throw. He went to the opposite. Yeah, and they run, he's running there. Didn't even realize it. Tried to get on Ruben for going to the lead over there, and these two were wrong. Pete, you did that the best I've seen all weekend. And the fact that you stayed there and refereed that position, uh, that play from the C position, not giving up your best angle, even though the lead came over to support strong side. And then you made your way out to trail versus turning and running. Hold on one second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh huh? What are we doing here? What are we doing here? Now. What do they got? So 
ceramic. Oh, he got some ceramic pieces, yeah. Color and direction. Color and direction. Make sure we understand that sequence. How many peaks? Twenty pieces. Three by twenty four. So the peak by twenty four. And 24 inches long. Take those off. Yeah, yeah, let me talk to him. Uh, those pieces are they for the just to go around the uh, That's for the shower at the top. Jesus Christ. Okay, all right, put him back on the phone. Hold on one second. Good job. Um, guys, good job on the uh, on administration, uh, handling the timeout and the free throws and good calls, okay? Good job, Travis. Okay. Hey, Pete, good job. Good call on that. Good no call on the verticality. Hey, we might still have a little basketball game here. You know, if they can make a little run, get us some stops. Yeah, yeah, he's got that arm inside. Got that arm inside. I know Travis was letting it go. I'd like to understand why the two difference of opinion, maybe it's different angles, but I can almost understand why not, but I could also see why. So we can talk about that.
That's that, uh, Travis. Way to get that shooter for him. Hey, we got a basketball game. 23 to go. Beat no foul. Advantage, disadvantage. Maybe we call the foul. They get two points with no time off the clock. We got a shove in the back. Now we got some hang up here. So if we have that foul down there on the slaps, Maybe they're in a one and one they shoot the ball. But if we don't have a foul down there, then are we, are we, are we actually helping them or hurting them? Because if they get fouled down there and they're in a one and one they get to come down here, stop the clock, shoot their one and one Maybe they close it to within four because it was a legitimate foul, wasn't anything made up. They get to come down here and shoot, bring the game within four with more time on the clock. Instead, we have a missed three-pointer with a, uh, a foul against them, which is going to put them down maybe by uh, another two points, which will make it 56, 50, 49. So is that a good pass, or should we call the foul? I know what we're trying to do, but I think in this case it may have hurt them because time is of the essence. See, because now, if you do that, you take those two points, four, then it's at 54-54 possibly, and a tie score versus a four-point lead. Did it make sense? Yeah. yeah. Very much. Yeah. I know, I know we're trying to let them play because the ball got where it's supposed to go, but that was a legitimate foul. That was in the backcourt you're talking in about? In the backcourt, yeah. yeah. Well, I think they maybe were trying to Huh? Might have been trying to foul. Huh? Might have been, but White's win, White's losing. Right. So Green, I mean, went up there and hammered him. He lost the ball and did this and then kicked it over to his ass. It's fine, let's let him play. But if we, the team behind gets to the free throw, that puts them in a position to be tied now versus yeah. down by now uh, five. So what's your, hey, your school of thought? Let me ask you this, guys. Well, I'll, I'll, all right, I'll explain the scenario to them and then I'll, then the way you guys can hear real quick. That'll be the first thing I talk about. And now be in the lead. Scenario was 49-4. They get or they get fouled, hammered, whatever, but they kick it off to their teammate. They rush down, take a ill-advised three, miss the shot, they end up fouling Green. Green gets to go down there and shoot the ball, tie score. 50, then they, they shoot two more points, 56-54. But if he'd have called that foul down there against the Green, they would have been shooting with more time on the clock and put themselves 54 four, uh, to 51-54. Right. Then they hit a three, it would have been 54-54. And because of the three the guys just hit, they would probably be in the lead had that foul been called and everything else played out the way it did. So that's the foul that after the game, the coach goes back to and says, oh, well, this is the one that cost us the game. He, he may. Or, or, <laughs> he, he, May, I think I would want to be foul. I want a foul call because the time is at 137. We're down by five points. I want call the foul against them. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, down. I want the clock stop. I want the clock stop. I want to be at the free throw line. So I'm at 54-51 versus 49-54 in a bad three-point shot. Right, right. Winston, good. Yeah, my pleasure. Nice to meet you, too.
Well, I know we made sure we came together, know where we are in the game right now. 55, 40, 40, 55, 59, front court status. Big possession here. Oh, he hit him. He hit him. Did he hit him? Did he hit him? Because I saw him go this way, but he didn't complain. So I don't know if he hit him or not, Ruben. But I want to take a look at your position on that three-point shot in the corner where you closed at the three-point line. Watch me now. Closed here at the three-point line and had to look over your shoulder to see where you back far enough to be see everything or were you on the line here and having to look over your shoulder I hey Randy did you notice Ruben's position on that last play I, I didn't see it I didn't either okay so see that's the same two hands if we'd have got that two hands down the belaboring a point but that's a, that's a critical play in the game. Absolutely. Now, now that you look at it, it's kind of a critical play in the game. If the dominoes fall in line like they did. And then again, I, I don't know whether, because he shot the ball. I don't know if he got hit on the arm. And I don't remember where his positioning was in conjunction to the three-point line. Gonna go something. Yeah, yeah, you, you would think, yep. yeah. Who's the shooter? That's a long distance switch. Who's the shooter? Who's the shooter? It is the right shooter. However, I don't see any communication. I don't see any communication between the three. Critical point 12. And a long distance foul call where we're switching and there's no communication as to who the shooter is. Is this the right guy? Hey, your shooter's 26. Come on, Travis, you come out and say, Pete, there's your shooter there. Because we're in a long distance kind of 